Greetings, everybody, and it's a great pleasure and honor to welcome you all to each another. It's diff, it's different news, views, and music show. It's a leadership series, and we always wanted to share our learnings and whatever our readings and experience, and bring great uh, stalwarts in the industry, people, uh, authors, entrepreneurs, and also people who are experienced to serving the community and the great leaders. So our goal is to make sure we learn. we care and we share so today we are going to bring our great the author of unlock book abhijit and uh, he leads a tech startup enterprise cx that helps companies to drive customer value digital outcomes and subscription growth and uh, he had led uh, several leadership roles at uh, cisco deloitte and cognizant he serves as an advisor to multiple startups and also a sought after speaker You, you, you could see it today. He's not only a speaker; he's also a great author, and uh, he also founded uh, Career Tiger, uh, online service uh, for folks who are interested to up their uh, career. So uh, he always very fondly says, "Up or out." So the question is, uh, everybody is interested to level up their career and then uh, go up the ladder uh, strategically, right? And what are the tactics that you might need to one has to follow? Uh, also, he's a mentor at uh, Santa Clara University, uh, advisor and mentor cloud and uh, other platforms. And he lives in San Francisco Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, with his wife, who is a teacher, and their two boys, who are sports fanatics and aspiring Shark Tank participants. So, this is Sri Srinivasa, as you you know me, uh, producer and host, leader, program management leader, speaker, mentor, coach, just uh, humbly. uh presenting you with great content thanks for all of you for joining okay and without much ado let me welcome abhijit abhijit welcome to our program shri it's an honor and a pleasure to be here thank you for inviting me thank you very much you know uh, one of the things that uh, uh, i i learned recently about the the word hero h e r o which uh, again the meaning is the happenings is not in our control in your control whatever that is happening you need to evaluate put your mind evaluate very well and then you have the respond how do you how do you respond to the happenings after your analysis and then finally the o your outcome will be different so the lot of people so you are a true hero here because A lot of people who complain about the current situation on oh COVID nineteen happened and oh my God the new normal and things like that and you sat and wrote a book called Unlock. So in today's in today's topic about realizing one's true potential leadership potential and you showcased you are a true leader. You not only uh, you uh, I mean help the uh, upping the career for folks but you demonstrated. that you shown it an action of writing a book so first of all congratulations for that and it was very released only yesterday i believe right yeah just a couple of days ago and sure you're too kind um i would say yeah it is a it is a humble effort uh, based on my learnings and things i've learned from other great leaders so uh it's been a uh, labor labor of love but it's uh, definitely coming together that's very nice i, I definitely i and thank you for sharing a copy with me and it was very interesting and it was very personal i mean my one of the first uh, experience of mine was it was like a, a the nice storytelling so one thing which which i liked in from your quotes i'm going to leverage your quote so you 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 mentioned here i'm going to read this here if you don't tell your story the way you want it mm-hmm. others will make up a story about you and you may not like it mm-hmm. so i like i loved your storytelling there so thank you very much yeah you got good So, so uh, since uh, the the topic again is part of our leadership series, I thought it will be very fitting to have you part of our show, and um, coincidentally on the occasion of your book launch as well. So maybe what we will focus in the uh, rest of the uh, the forty five minutes or so is about who's a true leader and what is expected of a leader and how one can become. Because let's just uh, can you help us unpack this for us. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, leadership in my mind is all about action and it's all about serving. And uh one of my mentors uh many years ago actually asked me a question which is, 
Hey, Abhijit, what's the sound of a one-handed clap? Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, what, what do you mean? We need two hands to clap, right? That's how you make a sound. And he was like, no, one-handed clap. That basically means that people show up because they want to be great. They are ambitious and they're driven and they want to be, I mean, I get so many people all the time who want to be coached. I want to become a director. I want to become a VP. But that's one part of the clap, right? The other part of the clap is what value am I creating for my organization, for my team, for my customer, for my stakeholders? What value am I creating? And once we figure out what that value is and we serve those customers, that's when true leadership you know, takes place. That's how you demonstrate leadership. And the interesting part is anybody can be a leader. Mm -hmm. We need to serve. We need to show value. We just need to show up. And once you do that, once anybody does that and demonstrates leadership, career acceleration is a given. It's mm. guaranteed, right? But a lot of for a lot of people, taking that step of demonstrating leadership is the hard part. And that's part of why I, you know, went through this journey. Excellent, excellent explanation. So I think Abhijit, the the I'm just doing my job. I'm given, there is a KPI for me. They have asked me to take care of those five things and I do all those five things. I expect uh, a recognition, a promotion, a compensation that associates with it. So am I not a leadership material? Yes, absolutely. And uh, you are. Uh, however, there are some things that also need to be considered. So a lot of, a lot of us, in, me, myself included, uh, a lot of times think about, okay, what am I here really to do? Okay, are these, the, as you said, the five KPIs, which is great and we need to hit them and uh, we need to demonstrate business results. And, you know, it's, it's a tough world out there. We need to demonstrate sales numbers or quota or, you know, service that we deliver or whatever business we're in. That's great. But it's not just what we do, but it's also about the how we do it. I see. Are we collaborative? Are we inclusive of others? Are we empathetic to the needs of the customer? Mm -hmm. uh, like bringing those qualities in is what makes us a leader because when we bring those qualities in, when we show empathy, when we show EQ, when we are, when we are learning and helping others learn, that's when you're moving the entire team forward. And that's when people will start to take notice of you that, hey, this person is not just hitting his or her own KPI. This person really cares about the team, really cares about the company, right? Because if I am successful and if everybody else is not successful, that's not real success. Real success is when all of us together are successful, right? Because it's, it's all about building that team, taking everybody with you in that journey and making that successful and making not only that journey successful, making your stakeholders successful as well. So, so in, in a short summary, make your team successful, which which after, of course, making yourself successful. Absolutely. And, right. and it's a lot of times, just to sort of make that a little bit visual is people think of this as a pyramid. Like, hey, I'm the leader. I'm going to be on the top of the pyramid. And everybody else reports to me. They're at the bottom of the pyramid. So my simple suggestion would be to invert the pyramid and say that I am here to serve everybody. I'm here to help everybody. How can I create value for you, right? And once we start thinking about that, that we are here to serve our team members, our stakeholders, our customers, everybody else, then it, everything starts to make sense. And by the way, I'm once I invert that pyramid and serving others, I will not only hit those KPIs, I'm actually going to hit it out of the park. Mm. Yeah, so so the, the challenge most of the time, Abhijit, is this, right? Um, I'm an individual contributor. Mm -hmm. I always land up helping people, others, team. I look after them after I'm looking after myself and things like that. So you are saying in your definition that you, this, this person is a true leader potential or can become a true leader because of he's adding value in summary. 100%. And there are some additional things that, uh, one can do to become an even stronger leader. There's always varying degrees of strength of leadership. For example, one of the one of the areas that 
uh, also wrote about it in Unlock, is about how do you help your stakeholders and your manager? For example, how do you exceed expectations? Like everybody has expectations of us. How do you understand those expectations? Some of them might be explicit, like KPIs. Some of them might be implicit. Mm -hmm. How do we understand that? And so once we understand those expectations, we have a choice. Either we accept those expectations or we say, no, wait a second. I don't think these are the right expectations. Yes, these are the three things that make sense. These two things, maybe not. Let's reset those expectations. And then over a period of time, we not only meet those expectations, but we exceed those expectations. It's the art of understanding, resetting, and exceeding expectations. Excellent. And so so in this case, uh, which is, which is uh, very, very, very well put, what if the expectations are not reasonable? Yeah, I mean, th see, if the expectations are re not reasonable, that just means that um, just organizationally speaking, there's a lot of work, a lot of effort that's going to be involved in getting or taking care of that work or project or whatever that is, which means we need to find the resources to get that done, right? And here's where we can always leverage other people. Right. The, the way to do that is to build currency. And since you've already helped so many people in the past, you have built currency with them. So when you feel that, oh, my God, there's so much work to be done or this is too much responsibility or I don't know if, you have, if I'm going to make those particular KPIs or metrics. That's when you go back to your network and say, guys, I need help with X, Y or Z. And since you've already built that currency, you will absolutely get help. And so leveraging th those type of currencies also is part of that leadership. Very well said. So when you said currency, I mean, it's like the social currency. It's one of the, right? It's one of the topics that we had, because I know you're so much into personal branding and uh, currency with uh, Prabhu, our best friend and uh, uh, co-host. Uh, we had a panel discussion on social currency really it was a wonderful conversation about building the network because in your book also you often talk about strengthening your network and network effect in the book unlock so so when you say what is that uh, how do we tap into the network at what stage are there any do's and don'ts of that because you can always seek help from somebody and say i need this i need this i need this but what if the network turns to you and say okay i'll give it to you so what am i getting out of it yeah, so it's always a give and take, right? What do you what do you think? I want to hear your thoughts. Oh, 100%. You know, um, we don't go out to dig a well or build a water pipeline when we are thirsty. Uh, we should just do it well in advance, which means we need to build our network before we actually need our network. And building a network is not just sort of going to networking events and conferences and hanging out. That's yeah, I mean, you, you do socialize um, with COVID. Maybe you do that virtually. But it's about where, how are you investing in those relationships and how are you creating value for them? Are you helping them? Mm. For example, a simple help for someone in your network would be, hey, Mr. X or Miss X, it would be really good if you meet Y because you guys have common interests and you may be able to help each other. You just basically expanded their network and therefore you created value for both of them. Or you can just say, hey, I just wrote this document or build this software or what have you. I would love if you, uh, you use it for some time or I would love to share this document with you or this is a template I've created, whatever it is. In fact, what I do a lot of times is I have a secret list of people I would want to keep in touch with over a period of time. And from time to time, I may just send them a book or I may send them a Starbucks coffee card or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. But the point is that I that we have to demonstrate that we care for our network. We build those relationships. We help them first without asking for anything in return. And that's hard. I know it's hard. But we are always we always want to play the long game, right? Yeah. And when we are playing the long game, it's all about giving. And then maybe, yeah, once in a while, I'm in a fix. I need help. Yes, absolutely. Hey, can you please help me with X, Y, and Z? And that's an absolutely valid question. Now, there might be cases where 
you may not have established that currency or I may not, I, I need help from someone else, maybe let's say a venture capitalist and I'm not established that currency, then, and I may be looking for an introduction, then I will be just straight up and say, hey, you and I don't know each other all that well, but I really need help. Here's my background. We have so we know so many people in common. Can you please help? It's a genuine ask for help. And I mean, more often than not, I've gotten help from people. So, yes, it's it works. <laughs> yeah, no, true. Because uh, in your storytelling, I, I love the way your storytelling in the book Unlock and uh, Seven Steps. By the way, uh, the the listeners will be wondering. Okay, we talk about Unlock. Definitely, we'll we'll cover that as well. Seven step steps to seven steps to transform your career. Uh, to realize your leadership potential. So basically, so one thing which I, I loved the way you mentioned about um, the the fact servant leadership by helping others, you become a leader. So pretty much uh, kind of hitting that uh, very nicely and uh, without even uh, have a feeling while building the network that you're being used up. You know what I mean? Because there's always the use and throw, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. This guy is available, man. He's helping. He's always helping. And then he he's a very good nature. So how do you how do you get a signal and say, hey, this, this is really, you're helping, but people are taking advantage of you? Yeah, I mean, that's always uh, hard. Um, if we are always giving and never taking, we essentially become a doormat. And we don't want to become a doormat. Right. But if we are taking, it feels like, I'm always taking and not giving anything in return. That's not fair. Most people are sort of matchers and they vary how much they match each other, right? Um, but um, most successful people, I would say high percentage of successful people, successful leaders are givers. And so being on the giving side is just good for us. It, I mean, health-wise is good. It gives us oxytocin. Right. And all those right. But giving is an act of establishing that currency but then making sure that you are drawing a boundary and say hey i can help you with this much but for this other part here's what needs to happen right yeah. just be straight up front but when when you take a strong stance on that people appreciate that people say yes that makes sense i'm, I'm with you and people will know where their boundary is when they ask for something Super cool. And then, um, so one of the things like, okay, you're networking well, you're helping people, you're looking for a right opportunity. And then I, I liked uh, one other uh, mention that you, you had in the book, preparation meets opportunity. Mm -hmm. I really loved it. So that means you keep doing, can you maybe, I would like to hear from your own words. What yeah, yeah. So I was researching for the book and I came across this really beautiful quote from Seneca, which basically means luck is preparation meets opportunity or some variation of that. Uh, it must be written in some old language. Okay. Um, but what that means is when we say, hey, like we all have people around us that we really admire. Oh, that person, let's say, works for Google or Amazon or you know, this person is, or, or is an entrepreneur or whatever that is. And we say, oh my God, that person is so lucky. I'm, I'm so smart, but I'm not that lucky. Why is that? But then we have to realize is luck can be manufactured. And the way to manufacture luck is to make sure we are prepared. Hmm. Because when we are prepared and that opportunity comes in, we'll be on that opportunity in an instant, right? But if the opportunity comes and if I'm not prepared, I mean, I won't be able to manufacture my luck, i.e. take advantage of that, of that opportunity. And the way to prepare ourselves is in many ways, we need to have self-awareness, which is something that we should all have. Like, what is what are my strengths? Because doubling down on strengths is what give us what gives us our superpower. We should know what our career stack is. What is those those unique set of skills? that provide us the sort of that unique package that differentiates us and also puts us at a place where we ex exercise the superpowers. So preparation takes that time. We need to invest in preparation, building our skill set. But here's the interesting part about opportunity. Opportunity is always created in the market, right? When it's, whether it's a new job, a new business, whatever it might be. 
it's always in the market. It's always about what the customer needs or a section of the population, needs, right? Now, to take advantage of that opportunity, we need to understand what's going on in the market. And that's why we need to figure out what's happening today and what's happening tomorrow so that we know what those opportunities mm. And so recognizing that opportunities come from the market and we cannot time like, oh, I need an opportunity next week. Not gonna happen because the market works at a different pace versus our expectation of the opportunity. So by being prepared, whenever the market is ready, when we see that opening, see that opportunity, we can take advantage of it. Okay, so basically be aware of the market trends. So and it's mm -hmm. like know your own, like the SWOT analysis, right? Strength, weakness, opportunities, and yep. threats. So that when the right opportunity comes, that you'll be able to uh, tap into. Okay. So, so in 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 that along the same lines, one of the other things which really caught my my, my attention is basically the food in the fridge kind of uh, analogy that you used, and the and the, the coasting. I like that. Can you please uh, help us? <laughs> Put some, uh, put some light on that thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is uh, this has been a major pet peeve of mine for many years. And uh, having ob observed people uh, around me, friends, colleagues. Um, and so you, I mean, all of us know people like this who would do the bare minimum at a job to make sure that stay, we stay employed and collect our salary and benefits. And we do a good job okay job not a great job but we're happily employed going about our lives it's like not going to the extra mile kind of right 100 percent, not going the extra mile not actually uh you know breaking through and actually doing something that's innovative and all of those things right okay now, now what that does is that could work for a few years but after some time it will lead to career stagnation I see. and that's what food in the fridge analogy is and this is something I learned from uh, one of the workshops I attended many, many years ago, which is if, if there is food in the fridge, mm. it sits there for a while. It's not good enough to eat because you're like, eh, that's a few days old. I want to eat something fresh. I want to get that salad or whatever else. But it's not good to or it's not that bad to throw out yet. But eventually it does get thrown out. A lot of people have behaved like that food in the fridge. And my my humble request is to don't be a food in the fridge don't be don't coast figure out where can you lead where can you make a dent in the universe and start leading start demonstrating leadership my father always used to say that uh, you should not be like um, also ran case mm. right? also ran and in fact uh, our best friend rajesh shetty yes talked about uh, on one of the one of the interviews he mentioned about uh, uh, prison cell jumping or hopping. Yeah, I think you use the word prison cell hopping. I am working for this group. I don't like it. I am then jumping to the next one. For some time, it's very exciting. But after that, it's so boring. I jump to the next one. So it's like, uh, uh, again, I have to quote my father for this. He said, Rolling Stone gathers no moss. So so, yes. so, 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 so I think very, very nicely you mentioned about the, the, the fact that you need to be attentive of the opportunity, help others, and also uh, be open-minded, learn new things, con continuously enrich your skills, etc. Fantastic. So I think so now this kind of a completes our some of the initial thought process and uh, the way the book is uh, has shaped up, uh, right? That's very good. And uh, then you also explained about, um, uh, again, in a way, don't expect a miracle to happen it is career is your responsibility and i like the, yeah. the example that you gave uh please yeah i mean so there is nobody who's going to show up at your door tomorrow morning and say hey i'm going to help you with your career and let's let's go there is no cavalry that's going to show up your company that you work for they may give you some resources to learn etc but they're not gonna build your career. Your manager uh, will help you. Maybe he has some advice for you. Uh, maybe that person, she is probably nice to you. Um, but that person is also not looking out for you all the time. The only person who is gonna look out for career growth for you is you. 
right? So we have to become aware of what we want to do with our careers. And part of this sort of this work is providing a set of tools to figure out how can I, how, what do I do with my career? What should be my strategy? And then how do I execute on that so that I actually get career growth? Because, and Sri, you know this, everyone's career is unique. There's no two people whose career trajectory is exactly the same. And the reason for that is because we have our own interests or passions and mm -hmm. also keep changing over a period of time. So my point is, let's use the tools to craft our own unique career leadership journey. Rather than saying, I'm going to follow this blind, blindly, this particular path or career or this trajectory, let's just create, craft our own unique journey. And these are the tools which will help to create that journey. So, so in the book, actually, um, uh, as you mentioned, you have provided uh, lots of uh, as part of the seven steps to transform one's career, your career, career. So you have provided uh, tools and templates where a methodical step by step approach. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So uh, the reason <laughs> so it's kind of interesting, right? So um, when I used to do a lot of coaching and I still do a lot of coaching, um, and when people used to come up to me and that that's where we got started with the servant leadership, which was like, I was not very happy helping these people because that would take a lot of time and I had other things to do and mm -hmm. you know, stuff to take care of. But I realized that that's, the, that's important and I need to pay attention to that. And that's how I learned, started learning. In those conversations, I would, you know, the person and I would actually go up to the whiteboard and actually draw out visuals like what do they want to do strategize about their careers etc and through those there were many patterns that emerge and through those patterns these are the tools so for example one of the tools is what i call as horizons okay the horizons tool is basically saying where's the market today and where's the market going to be tomorrow so where the market today is the horizon one which gives me my bread and butter like this is the job i'm doing right now mm -hmm. right Two is what's the next jump? What's next happening from a, let's say a technology or a business standpoint, right? What is that next jump? That's horizon two, because I should be investing some skills to learn what's in horizon two so that I can make that next jump and stay ahead of the curve. And horizon three are those wild out there businesses, technologies, opportunities that I should know about. I should learn a little bit because even if I invest a little bit, the payoff is going to be massive. Right. So if I see my career or my skill set investment as a horizon one, horizon two, horizon three, I can basically take advantage of market trends. We see a lot of people getting impacted by market trends. What that means is a wave comes, there's cloud, software as a service, security, whatever the next wave is. It's yeah, data science, you name it, artificial intelligence, art machine exactly. learning. Oh my God. It's going to hit and people are going to be like, oh, my God, I don't know this technology or this business. And they, they get hit. They get impacted. But with this approach, what I can do is stay ahead or at least stay current of the market so that when these waves start to make, become bigger, I'm going to ride that wave. I'm going to take advantage of that market situation and that market opportunity rather than getting impacted by that market opportunity. So, so basically, in summary, one must uh, figure out the career path, the career goals, career ambitions, and uh, there is nobody else can help other than their own person. But if you wanted to get some expert advice, it's okay to seek expert advice. And one of the things that you attempted from your experience, Abhijit, is to bring out some of the tools and uh, techniques which a, a person can follow, document, be sincere, and uh, do it like a methodical approach. So that's one of the things uh, uh, here in the book, right? Exactly, exactly. And that's the path we can all follow. Mm. You know, one of the things is uh, also when we are when we are in in this bind or fix, we don't know what to do next, etc. Mm. Having mentors is very very useful and very important. Right. Um, and I mean, all of us have mentors. Um, a couple of things that will help to get mentors is number one, don't call them a mentor because nobody likes to be called a mentor. <laughs> so mm. just say that I need, I'm reaching out to you for advice or I need help with something right. uh, and have questions for them. 
um, and figure out how, is, if there's a way you can help your mentor so that you're building that relationship. It's a two-way street rather than a one-way street. Otherwise, you know, we go back to the conversation about givers and takers. That's totally fine. I think they're all uh, aligned uh, together. And so, so let me kind of a little bit uh, go to the, my first question, which I could have asked, what make you, what made you to write this book? <laughs> um, it's actually a weird and slightly funny story. Would you like me to share it? Of course. Yeah, please. Yeah. Our, our audience will listen. <laughs> By the way, uh, dear listeners, if you're watching this on uh, YouTube or hearing this on um, iPhone, meaning podcasting, Google podcasting, Apple podcasting, please do hit the subscribe button. There are lots of leadership series. Today we are talking to Abhijit and he's a founder of Enterprise CX. He's an angel investor. He's a product leader and he's author of uh, the new book, Unlock, which is just uh, released uh, recently. Seven steps to transform your career and realize your leadership potential. So today's topic, I just happily named it as how one can realize your uh, leadership potential and then we'll just uh, have Abhijit kind of uh, give some high level information about uh, his experience and how he uh, wrote this book. And so that's where you are. Thanks for joining today. And please do uh, forward it to your uh, friends and family who might find it useful. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Great. Agree. And so just a little story on how the book came about. So this is probably September, October last year. Um, and our common dear friend, Rajesh Sethi, who is also my mentor, um, and uh, although he doesn't like to be called that, so that's why I said don't call people. He's mentor. a good friend. Uh, you, you can say that he's my mentor too, as well. Yes, exactly. So yeah. uh, I'm I'm supposed to, or I wanted to speak at a particular event. It was like a prestigious event, and I put in my proposal. And Rajesh was, you know, my guy, my the person who went to bat for me, who basically presented my proposal to this company or this association. And they were sort of going through. They were basically finalizing a list of speakers. And uh, one of the uh, one of the persons who was in that committee basically said, Rajesh, this is not going to work. Abhijit cannot speak at this event. And Rajesh said, why? What's the what's the issue? I mean, he's he's an expert on this topic, which is like customer experience. Um, basically, they said we invite only authors to ah. speak at the event. And Rajesh, you know, very smart. Obviously, he's a super smart guy. He was so quick on his feet and said. Abhijit is writing a book. Don't worry about it. And that's how I got into the speaking event. But the, the other part is basically that evening, I got a phone call from Rajesh. He basically told me, hey, I think you're writing a book. And I'm like, OK, I'm writing a book. <laughs> and from that, the journey started. But in November, which was kind of completely fortuitous, in November in the United States, there's a process known as NaNoWriMo. And NaNoWriMo is a virtual collection or a community of writers who come together, who start at, in November, November 1st. They start and end a book in the entire month. They finish the book, right? So I was part of that process, um, completed the book, um, I would say 90, 95%, which is completed. And then, of course, worked on it with my you know, copy, uh, copy editor team, et cetera. In 30 days? You wrote it within number. Yes, that's right. Three days. It's something, the perfect timing, man, especially when people are figuring out what do I do? What do I do? And then you're saying, hey, I have this mantra. I have this tool. I mean, yeah, pretty. It's good. I always like this uh, as, a, as a service. And uh, you made it available on, on Amazon, too, which is interesting. So I think I'm sure people who are interested can definitely check it out. Uh, unlock. It's very easy to remember. U N L O C K. So, so that's very good. And then you know what? You are you are motivating me because I used to uh, I've written a couple of articles on LinkedIn on project and program management. Now I'm getting some speaking assignments too on what I know. I do not know many things, but what I know, I know it well. Okay, on pro project program management stuff. So now you are telling me if I need to be invited more on speaking engagements, I have to write a book now. So that's what the key takeaway for me. Absolutely. Can I suggest something that will help a lot of the project and program managers out there? Sure. So this is a suggestion. Okay, take it or leave it, as always, with advice. Um, so in the past, I have struggled with this as well. Many, many years ago when I was a PM, project manager, program manager. Yeah. Um, what has happened over the years 
is the term that the industry in, that we use in the industry about project manager or program manager yeah has become common and because of that has become commoditized yes so my suggestion uh, which is sort of build out a t-shaped net uh, you know skill set etc is program management and project management is an essential skill it's a very important skill let's make sure we use that in the context of what do i do with that skill like, like for example I may say that I'm an effective communicator, for example, right? Yeah. But what do I do with that communication is important. So, for example, if I'm a project manager in the pharma industry, I can say, hey, I am leading large FDA approval programs, right? And that way, I'm creating an expertise versus saying I'm a program manager. Exactly. Program manager is something I do. But the expertise, the work, the outcome that I create is this. Because by talking about the outcome, we are elevating ourselves in terms of what our brand is, what we bring to the table, and it also helps the other person. The other person understands, oh, that's what you mean. That's what you do. I get it. Now I totally understand what you do. And the next time I meet someone else and I know there might be some connection, I might be able to introduce you it better. So I think that way we can all sort of up level ourselves and our game in terms of what we do versus the outcomes we create. You know, fantastic. So I got to stand corrected. So I have to now repeat what I just said two minutes ago. So okay. Abhijit, <laughs> I am an operational program manager who take care of digital transformation and they're making a lot of digital uh, solutions and launching new products and making sure at the end of the day, the customer customer satisfaction and customer value creation is taken care of. And through the value creation, we capture the value. So more operational program management. I moved from an IT information systems, uh, software development, uh, uh, program management of multi-million dollars stuff. So you're right. Thank you for correcting me. I mean, this is the real coaching. Oh my God, I never anticipated this. <laughs> Thank you so much. And uh, of course, SOX compliance and other stuff. Okay, good. Hey, this is all about personal branding, which is your, your, your uh, uh, passionate, you're very passionate about and which you do mention in your, uh, in your uh, steps in your pyramid, right? Yeah. You, you, you talk about the market trends you talked about. You talked about um, creating value, which is uh, two things. And of course, you need to have some goals and systems. You've touched on it briefly and personal branding. Yep. Fantastic. Okay. So, so again, the question here is, um, we will just move on um, the work. So, let me just interject one thing on personal branding, which is when we talk about unlocking potential, that branding part is so important because when we talked about at the start of the show, if you don't tell your story, yeah then other people will make up a story about you that you may not like. And so telling that narrative, having that narrative, that outline, that story is so important about, about us. And it's not about sort of, hey, I just want to beat my chest and say I'm this great leader or whatever. No, it's not about that. It's about being authentic. It's about being authentic about who you are, what you do, and how you bring value to others. And by doing that, you're not only helping yourself, you're el helping others because now others understand what you do and they will be opening opportunities for you. Remember, opportunities come from the market. And when you introduce yourself better to the market, the market will open opportunities for you. No, that's fantastic. Thanks. Good advice. Uh, appreciate uh, you sharing that. And uh, you also mentioned about this uh, compounding growth. Like, what's that? I mean, it's like an investment. Are you uh, touching in terms of the investment lines? Where you want us to invest in? Go ahead. Absolutely. So one thing is that when we invest in ourselves, it always pays off, right? And the way we invest in ourselves should be continuous. We should be learning all the time. It doesn't mean we should be busy all the time, but we have to learn all the time. What that means is, what are my daily habits? What are the things am I doing week, weekly? What are the things I'm doing monthly? For example, can I make a goal that at least once a quarter, I'm going to learn something new. I'm going to sign up for a class. Or I'm going to basically listen to this particular podcast every week. When I'm out for a run, walking the dog, doing dishes, 
by the way, when I do dishes, I actually watch videos. Um, I actually watch a lot of videos just doing dishes, but that's a different hack. We can talk about it some other time. Um, but that's a, those are the hacks, uh, and I mentioned some in Unlock, but those are the hacks we could use so that we are learning, so that we are making sure that we're not only picking up hard skills, but we are also picking up soft skills, and we are also training our conscious and subconscious to understand these concepts. A lot of times what happens is when we listen to certain things, new concepts, our mind may not be open for it. But over a period of time, when we understand that a little bit more, we basically become open to all of those opportunities. So the investment I'm talking about is about that. Because these small investments compound and create massive results over a period of time. Very nice. It's like a, like a rec recurring deposit uh, kind of, right? You keep uh, investing and then uh, you will not never know by the time just it will grow like uh, leaps and bounds. It's fantastic. It's, it's very good. Very nice. So um, back to uh, one. Yeah, can one I give you a cricket example? Yeah, yeah. Cricket. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so for the longest time, Rahul Dravid, I don't know if you know Rahul Dravid. I, of I'm course, of course, Captain, man. I mean, he's, yeah. he's known for his uh, strategic uh, methods. Exactly. So Rahul Dravid, for the longest time, was not being included in the Indian cricket team, even though youngsters like Sachin and others were included. And But he was performing so well, and he actually learned new things, new skills. And because of that, he not only broke into the team, but he went to the very top. But here's what he did. He, he could be a bowler, not so much a bowler, but a wicket keeper, a, you know, yes. of course, the best batsman. He could be the opening batsman. He could be a forward shot like fielder. He could do all of those things because he put in the effort to learn over a period of time. Those investments gave a massive payoff over a period of time. In, a, in other words, it's like retooling. One has to constantly retool themselves to, yes. to be a, a available when opportunity knocks at your door. Right? A very good example. Um, so one thing uh, uh, in this process, uh, you also mentioned in the book, Unlock, work ethic. So what, what, how does it figure into this equation? Yeah, I mean, work ethic is basically how do you demonstrate that you will be able to take care of your work? And in the sense that you're demonstrating, again, I'll just go back to the exceeding expectations example, right? It's not about oh, I'm available for my boss all the time, or I'm like on my Slack or I am or whatever else, and I'm always on. That's not a work ethic. The work ethic is what needs to be done, what needs to be delivered. And I'm not only basically managing to deliver that, but I'm exceeding expectations. So for example, um, let's say I need to develop a document or you know report or whatever, or project. The interesting thing is not that I did it or not successfully. The interesting thing is, did I actually talk to all the stakeholders? Did I get everybody's inputs? So that the quality of document is so high that my boss will take that document to all the meetings that he or she goes to and say that this is what our team delivered versus, did you, did you create the document? I did, great, thank you. But see, it's not transactional. It's about how you do it. And getting to that level of leadership is not just work ethic. Work ethic is showing up and doing the work and all of that, right? But actually taking that a step further in terms of how we do it. So basically, you're, you're saying like you're forming partnerships, you collaborate, soliciting input from your fellow beings and other leaders of other organizations sure. at the same time. Because um, uh, people might think, oh, I'm a leader. I'm a, what do you call, uh, I'm not a task taker. I'm a task master. So there's always the conflict that occurs with people, right? So in your in your opinion, from in the beginning of the conversation, you mentioned not necessarily a task taker also can become a leader by the sheer uh, the knowledge on a particular topic or your subject or the process or domain or function or organization, a group or tribe. I love the way you coined all of these together uh, to form uh, the the attributes or leadership qualities. Oh, totally. I want to touch upon the taskmaster example that you just gave. I think a taskmaster is more like a manager. Like, because, see, management is about, um, am I doing things right? If, like, I've been given these three things, four things, am I doing these three, three things right? Leadership is about, am I doing the right things? Exactly. Right? And so I think 
yes, it's management is required. We need to get to execution. Don't get me wrong. We need to get that done. But then that is within that confines of that particular task or work. But leadership has a more of a continuum rather than the, that particular task. If that yeah, so the strategic versus tactical, for example. So you got to you got to switch gears depending upon uh, which uh, level uh, ground that you play and whatnot, right? Uh, Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I think uh, again back to uh, I might be going back and forth here because I, I love this so much uh, while reading this. Oh, I'm loving this conversation. Super yeah. excited. Thank you. Because uh, one thing you mentioned about. Um, one has to be, uh, it's a great time for self-realization. So maybe when you are, when you are a task taker or when you're a strategist, right? All right. So you need to be, uh, realize your own potential. Is that right? Uh, you, you keep mentioning about self-realization, right? Okay. Yeah. I mean, this is one of the sort of the, sort of the sad and disappointed, disappointing parts of this, which is, whenever I see people and I meet people and see so much potential in people, like, oh my God, this, this person is capable of doing so many wonderful things, yet there might be certain things that are holding them back. Exactly. And, and the, the issue is not so much of, um, you know, oh, I can or cannot do this because everybody can do amazing things, yeah. but it's about what is holding them back. And that's the process that yeah. we have to go through and understand ourselves better. It starts with self-awareness. And self-awareness, a lot of times we think that, oh, I know myself really well, I know I have these kind of skills, and that's good enough. But just having an open conversation with a dear friend, a trusted colleague, a former manager, would really, really help to understand what our strengths are. And it's unbelievable the number of aha moments I've had and the people that I know I have had where I sit down with a colleague and say, hey, tell me a little bit about the things that, that I do right, I do great, and the other areas where, you know, not so much. And that is such a revealing conversation. Um, and make sure you have a safe environment when you go into those conversations, but having a self-awareness conversation like this is, is absolutely recommended. The only caveat I would add is when you're having a self-awareness con conversation with your spouse, uh, just be a little bit careful. But other than that, you're all good. Okay, okay. Sure. And uh, thanks for that guidance there, uh, Abhijit. And uh, dear listeners, uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, um, this is uh, we are doing a book review of uh, Unlock as well as part of the conversation and learning from uh, the masters, realizing your leadership potential. So again, the question is, first of all, we are to help our career as uh, Abhijit uh, um, Kadilkar said. So um, I hope uh, these are all very, very good advice as well. And you will find much more of these uh, statements and uh, uh, beautiful quotes. In fact, uh, I was just, uh, uh, I'd like to read one more quote here. Um, Exceeding expectations is how you go from a mediocre performer to an outstanding performer. So that's pretty good. And I like this, Abhijit. Working with a purpose helps leaders generate the energy and excitement required to overcome adversity and ensure success. Oh, so pretty, oh, my, oh my God. I love that one, that part so much because a lot of us think that, oh, becoming a leader, you can now achieve everything. But adversity is a given. It's guaranteed that we will fail in some respect when we are going on a journey, that we will stumble and we'll, you know, we'll have to basically stop for some time and maybe do some other things or you, we may be hurt or what have you. But if our goals are clear, if you really want something, that's what we are pursuing. This, this purpose guides us, it energizes us, it excites us and it keeps us going to achieve that. Because once we have that purpose, that pursuit, then we know we're going to fall down a few times. That's okay. We'll dust ourselves up and get going again. And that's the part that is uh, so important. And that's why that, again, going back to self-awareness uh, and a couple other concepts that I've also mentioned, like Ikigai, we, we really can figure out what do I want to do? What's going to be my purpose? Sometimes, interestingly, purpose changes because as we grow, um, as we, you know, are exposed to different environments, we may actually feel that, you know what, 
For example, I wanted to be a firefighter or a pilot or what have you, but now I want to be want to become something else. And that's totally I'm okay. And that's totally understandable. In fact, our plan, our strategy for our career should be flexible. It should be taking advantage of the market. It's okay. And it's not necessarily a hard headed view of this is my only goal. I'm going to pursue it. No, be flexible, take advantage of market opportunities. So it's, it's about the, I think, common question that people ask about how many times can I change my career? Because I try something in the, I've seen people who are realtors, for example, right? They become musicians. The people who are uh, really engineers with the technology degree, they completely quit and then they become realtors. You know, you know what I mean? And they were, they were changing. So I think the one thing which I like in them is the confidence that they have got in is I can do it. I have a built a network. The network will come to help me. So I, 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 I'm strengthening the, the, the network. So you're right. I think uh, to you very rightly said, it's about the self-realization at the end of the day. One, one should know their strength, weakness. And then one thing which I like is uh, you, you kept mentioning about in the book about the one has to work on the develop on that strength correct? constantly. Absolutely. You know, the, those strengths are when we build on our strengths, we will have a much more successful career by fixing our weaknesses. We will have a good career, but not a great career. So if we spend all of our time just fixing weaknesses, we will be just OK. But if you really want to be great, double down, triple down on your strengths. That doesn't mean that if I have massive issues with my weak weaknesses, I will still be successful. For example, if I want to be a, a mobile developer, will I be still successful if I don't know programming? Eh, not really. So the point is that making sure that you are doubling down on your strengths at the same time, you don't have like any uh, massive weaknesses, right? So that's, that's the part here. Yeah, th that's pretty good. And also um, in the beginning of the conversation, you also mentioned about the be aware of your market trends, but also the various domain, right? Because right now you see everybody is jumping into data science. Everybody is trying to, oh my God, artificial intelligence is the thing. And then we got to really learn to, to go learn Python programming. And I've done COBOL programming. I've done basic programming. And then I never did anything after that. Now I got to learn Python. Oh my God, is that the only way that I can just uh, get into machine learning, deep uh, deep learning and things like that? So, so the question is, there's always a little bit of uncertainty there where I cannot make that right decision there. So what do I do in this case? Yeah, I mean, so, so that's a great example, Sri. So thanks for bringing that up. So here's the thing. With every technology or every shift, whether it's a market shift, technology shift, business shift, there are massive opportunities that come up. At the same time, there are some opportunities that go away. And what that, what that means is, it's not just the technology pieces that become important. Those technology pieces open up so many new business opportunities as well. Okay. So my take is there are roles that we don't even know of today that are gonna be there tomorrow. I see, yep, yep. So there's gonna be brand new roles coming up. I'll give you one quick example, training AI. There will be new roles because of a person's expertise or knowledge about a particular process Maybe they know a particular domain like healthcare or security or manufacturing, what have you. Their role will be to train AIs, train robots, or train the bots. By the way, bots are already here. We're just now experiencing them even more personally in different ways. So AI will replace a lot of things that are happening within you know, technology. It may actually replace some of the tasks we do, mm -hmm. but our jobs are going to change there will be brand new jobs coming up. So that's how all of this evolution will happen. And it is up to us to make sure that we are we understand this, but take advantage of this trend. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, so again, uh, one reference from the book, T-shaped domain skills. What's that? Yeah. So um, to become a successful leader, we need to have a T-shaped skill set. That's, that's one of the things that people hire leaders for, that 
leader, uh, when someone hires a leader or someone hires a person who could do a job really well, that person has expertise in a certain area. So that's the vertical part of the team. But that person also knows enough about the broader areas of that, it be that technology or business or process, so that that person can not only contribute with that expertise, but actually contribute to other areas of the business or technology or their operations or what have you. Those people become more successful and those people are actually uh, more uh, in, more sought after by recruiters, by hiring managers. So building that T-shaped skill set will put everybody sort of automatically on a leadership path. Beautiful. Very well explained. Well done. Well done. Thank you so much for uh, color coding that. Okay. So the um, most, uh, I mean, people are waiting to hear from you. You keep, uh, of course, the book's title is Seven Steps to Transform Your Career. Can you just give a high level on what are those uh, seven steps that we should uh, really pay attention to? And also, I know I'm sure people will be more excited to check the book and uh, get to know your process, tools, templates, and your experience as you as the story is, is being told, right? And uh, on in Unlock, could you just at least to give a high level in a couple of minutes on the seven uh, steps? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Happy to. So. The seven steps are, you know, um, these are tools that anybody could use to basically transform their career, accelerate their career, and become successful leaders, right? And the way to use the, this tool set is think about that as a set of tools you have. You've got screwdrivers, you got a hammer, and other things, and that becomes part of your tool set. And once you understand this tool set, you can take this tool set and carry with you anywhere you want, right? And become successful. Now, let me just start sequentially because that's how the tool sure. is expected to be used. Um, so for example, the first one is North Star, which is, uh, think about that as creating your strategy. A strategy is nothing but a fancy word for a plan. So having a really good career plan is good, it's important, but also make sure it's flexible. So there's tools in there in the North Star area where you can actually build out a career plan. The next part is discover. And discover is about discovering your skill sets and building a career stack. Over the years, Sri, and I'm sure you know this and many, I know this, over the years we've built up so much skill set that we kind of don't always remember all the skills that we have. So this career stack exercise, Discover, allows us to repackage those skills in different ways so that when we do this repackaging of skills, brand new roles and brand new opportunities open up. So that's the repackaging, that's discover. We discover new roles and new, new opportunities. Horizon is the part that we just went over where Horizon 1 uh, is basically understanding market trends today. Horizon 2 is immediately what's going to happen next in terms of market trends. And Horizon 3 are those sort of long-term, uh, like amazing pie in the sky type of things that may happen in the future. And then we get into resolve, which is, decision making because a lot of times we may have a great plan we know the opportunity but we're just not able to make a decision and actually commit to it yep. so resolve is the part where we actually remove our limiting beliefs and we actually take action moniker which is the next step is about creating a personal brand so that we are able to tell our story authentically and and you know purposefully and then how do you spell that, how do you spell that word moniker m o n i k e r Okay, I'm just putting it so that people can read it under the banner, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Sure. And then sure. uh, the next part is flywheel, and think about the flywheel as a, as like yep. a sort of, as a wheel, right? And when we take the first step, it leads us automatically to the second step. It leads us automatically to the third step, and sort of the wheel starts to spin. And the the more effort we put in, it starts to spin spin faster, and that gives us acceleration in our career, and that's what will accelerate your leadership career. And lastly, and this is so important, it's renew, where we take the time, ideally every quarter, and we sit down with ourselves, just ourselves, and we say, okay, what's going on? Am I making progress? Am I learning? What's going on in the market? Should I be making a change? Should I learn new skills? All of those things, we should take stock of that at least once a quarter, 
And then that way we can keep ourselves renewed, refreshed, and re-energized so that we are actually successful at work. So, so basically, for all this, uh, um, the steps that you mentioned here, you have provided from your experience the various uh, tools and templates. So one has to document, discuss, exactly, and, uh, or go about this as a very methodical approach. Correct? Yeah. That's right. So the templates are in the book, um, or you can actually go to the website and download them. Or oh, you have it like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, and I would highly recommend printing them out. There's something magical about putting your pen to paper and putting your thoughts on paper because that actually triggers a lot of the thinking in your brain about strategy, about plan, how do you want to go about it? And you will you will see that happening. But if you are a digital native and you absolutely just want to use computers, there's a Microsoft Office set of templates as well. These are available for you to download and that's how you can actually uh, keep up and sort of categorize all of these yeah. things. And these tools would uh, would help you to build out your career strategy. So pretty pretty good. I think. Uh, I mean, like you said, it's not just like uh, uh, learning something is good, but putting that into action is what we are uh, we have to do. Can I tell you a quick story about that. Sure. Uh, so so this is about a year, fourteen months ago. Um, I I wanted to take a major step in my career, and part of that yep. was basically helping people more in terms of my coaching and other things. Basically, I said, I, I had a lot of doubts and the doubts were, uh, am I worthy? Am I good enough? Am I this? Am I that? Right. And so I made a, made a list of that. I came up with 22 items in that list, just a Google document, just created a list and basically said, um, can I, uh, you know, basically all the things that I felt, oh, is this worth it? Am I going to be uh, laughed upon by other people if I just do this work? Am I, will my friends desert me? And you know, all of those doubts that we have in our mind, right? I wrote them down and then just went for a walk, actually came back the next day to that very, very same document. And I realized that all of those beliefs are my own making, every single one of them. Or if it's really a roadblock, there is a solution to that roadblock. If I don't know a certain scale or anything like that, if that's limiting me, I can find out who in my network can help me. Yeah. But all of those things have a solution and we can actually succeed. And that's how we get to commitment. We have to commit to do that work. If we don't commit, all of this is just a plan. Correct. Because the universe always rewards actions. The universe does not reward ideas. So it's a, we, all we need is action at the end of the day, right? All right. Hey, um, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Almost uh, we reached uh, our time and thank you for uh, spending time with us and uh, on behalf of It's Diff leadership shows. Uh, it's Diff is It's Different News Views and Music Show. And we are doing this, dear listeners, for, as a part of our leadership, our commitment to the community in terms of uh, what we learned, we care and we share. So if you have any uh, speakers and if you have any comments and feedbacks, do send it to us at itstiff at gmail.com. So we were talking to Abhijit Kadilkar. He is actually the, uh, what you can say, a proud uh, product leader and author of uh, Unlock. He's a founder of Enterprise CX and he's an angel investor. He's also a speaker and career coach. And um, as you have seen in the last uh, couple of minutes, in case you join late, he has uh, put his experience and his journey into uh, writing as he very rightly said that uh, uh, it will help uh, people to who are thinking about upping their career and getting some career advice etc so it has been really a pleasure abhijit Shri, thank you so much for um, inviting me to the show and what you're doing is so unique and you're inviting all of these people to help out the community you're creating tremendous value in the community so you are doing phenomenal and keep rocking, Shri. Thank you again. Thank you so much for your time and you leaders and you authors and speakers. I think we are forming our network effect here. So that's what will help more of your speakers coming to our show. And then there'll be more customers, more fans will come into the show. More fans come into the show. We'll get more creative content. I think that's a real uh, network effect. And uh, thank you so much for your time. All right. Dear listeners, thank you. See you next time. And uh, please stay tuned. 
we have our, again our apple podcasting google podcasting and also on youtube channel if you're listening to this please do subscribe whichever form where you are listening to this show and we'll until next time keep safe distance and keep safe and uh, take care of your well-being take care this is shri shrinivasa signing off